I have this little idea that might turn into something huge. Or it could blow something up. But simulation physics in Blender is super fun to play around with. So I want to create some addicting animations and push my hardware and software to the absolute maximum and see what I can create. So to recap today guys, the challenge is to create the most addicting 3D animation and hopefully go viral. Now for that first part, to be addicting, you need to be somewhat satisfying, right? So we've done satisfying animations before, sorta. Now to make something go viral though, this has changed over the years and for the better. In the old days, people would get away with going viral over clickbaity thumbnails and titles. Now the algorithms are much smarter and basically watch time is everything. So we want to show something cool that just keeps getting cooler and cooler and cooler as the video goes. And this is where we're gonna see if I can't hit the right note and go viral with a satisfying, addicting 3D animation. It's very possible some of our past 3D animations went viral on sites like Facebook. This never ending cube drop of mine gaining over 10 million views, but this took over 30 days of being posted to pop off. But we have about 48 hours only in this video to see if we can go viral. And if not, well, then we're complete and utter failures. So how does one go about constructing a viral addicting video? We'll start with something eye-catching and recognizable. So maybe the most popular video game over the past decade or two? Yeah, Minecraft. To start, we need a pleasant looking scene. So I grabbed some Minecraft models off of Sketchfab, like Steve and this Minecraft bed, and then rendering the scene in Blender Cycles with a high quality HDR from Polyhaven that gives some nice results. And then I figured we might as well dump as many particles as possible onto Steve's head as he tries to sleep, cause why not? Now basic particles in Blender, kinda boring, they're kinda dumb, and they don't really interact with each other. So, let's use the molecular add-on. We've used this a few times in the past, it's an oldie but a goldie for Blender, and it allows you to add realistic collisions to particles, as well as link them together a bit, so you can get some clumping, perfect for sand. This ought to look more satisfying. So, I added a default cube, gave it a basic Minecraft sand texture. Then after installing the free molecular add-on into Blender, I start by simulating the bare number of particles possible on this cube for some physics. Adding to our Steve model and our bed collision physics, you can see I get some pleasant looking animations. So let's start rendering these out at different qualities now. The higher you go with this, the more you'll want to play around with the linking settings in the molecular add-on here. You can see with these settings now, I'm getting some nice chunky clumping in my sand that's looking kind of cool. So at this level of detail, I'll render out another animation. And as you push the quality higher and higher, your poor PC will start hating you. But it's surprisingly no problem at all for me with the power of Lenovo with Intel inside this video sponsor. It takes a lot of processing power to simulate all of these physics, but when you're utilizing all 24 cores on the Intel Core Ultra 9 processor inside this slim portable laptop, it can actually handle a lot of these advanced simulations in near real time. This Lenovo Legion 7i comes packed with 32 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte of SSD storage, critical for things like advanced 3D water simulations that will create large files of cache onto your hard drive, something that will also be simulating here in a minute in my efforts to create these addicting animations. I wanted to make these animations bright and pleasant looking and rendering them out on the Legion 7i with its 2.5K OLED display really makes the colors pop. Rendering is fast and zippy, zip, zippy, zippy is a word, right? As you would expect on an NVIDIA RTX 5070 GPU that's packed inside this slim portable workhouse. Now to get the physics of sand, I had to play around a lot with the linking and the tension and the broken values within the molecular add-on. For sand, I really didn't want something overly chaotic as that's not very satisfying. And that was definitely something that tended to happen pretty often. So toning that down so it breaks at the right times, but initially kind of starts to clump together was something that took a lot of experimenting with. And for the final animation here, I pushed the physics higher than I've ever gone with the molecular add-on. I went over 500,000 particles, all with their own collisions and clumping physics. I was pretty sure that Blender was just going to crash at this point, but somehow I actually got the simulation to simulate, and after nearly an hour of caching time, 
it was ready to render this animation out with some motion blur. And this is the result of our first animation that I got. Pretty cool stuff. And at all the different levels of resolution building up to that, you can kind of see at what point you hit that sweet spot and things just start looking realistic. So it's on to uploading this animation to every single shorts, reels, talks to see if you could roll that lucky number and go viral. Cause viralness is super random. Like this looping animation of a lumberjack going to town on this tree got over 14 million views on TikTok, but this video of a karate kicking cow that I made didn't ever really go anywhere on the platforms and not many people saw it. I just never really know what might pop off. So while I waited to see if we got any success on this addicting animation, I got back to work on the next satisfying animation. Actually the next two. The next one was easy enough. It was cloth physics, which gets really crazy in Blender because you can push this to a quality level that goes beyond real world realisticness. Cloth physics is pretty simple for any of you Blender users out there. You just grab a plane, add some cloth physics to it, add some collisions to it, and then start subdividing away in this case to get the highest level of quality. This one I pushed over a million faces being simulated as cloth. That's over 4 million vertices. Just crazy high resolution. And as you can see, interesting to see the way Blender handles it at these higher levels. You just get like too much detail almost. Like who knew you could have too many wrinkles? But it's pretty satisfying to see just what it starts looking like at those higher quality levels. So, bada -boom, bada boom post that one up on the TikToks as well and go on to the next and final animation that I wanted to create, water physics. For the water physics, I've been working at this for days, trying to use Blender's built-in Mantaflow simulating tools. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I've used Mantaflow a lot and you just kind of get random results. It's not very reliable, unfortunately. And as I was hitting these higher and higher quality levels in the animation, I started to have issues. Like the water sliding weirdly to the side and things just jumping around not where they're supposed to be. Unfortunately, Manaflow is still not perfect. It can work in some cases and it won't work in others. So I went to a new add-on for simulating the water physics. Some of you probably heard of it, Flip Fluids. Flip Fluids is an add-on that you can buy and install for Blender, but also as I understand it, the code is open source. So you can find versions of Blender that people have compiled with the Flip Fluids add-on and download those yourself. Or you can make your own version of Blender and compile it with this open source code, I guess, if you want to get all nerdy with it. With Flip Fluids now, I was having better results. And as you can see here, I started simulating bubbles, splashes, and foam to go along with our water simulation. I'm gonna get out with my fairly simple but realistic looking water material that I show how to create in that video there, I believe. So you can see what I got with the Flip Fluids result compared to the Mantaflow built-in Blender fluid result. Just a cleaner result with Flip Fluids. You actually seem to get more fluid in the simulation, which I thought was interesting. But there you go. If you guys were interested in fluid simulation, you can see how the two compare now. But baking fluids is pretty complex when you're doing all of those particles along with it. For this one, I went all the way up to 300 divisions on the water. And after hours and hours of baking and a few overnight renders, again, I almost feel like it's too realistic, if that's possible. I feel like 200 divisions is kind of the sweet spot and 300 divisions is just like too much detail in the water. It's weird. So with our third and final physics addicting, satisfying animation, anything you want to call it, post it on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. It was time to give it as much time as we can, just about 24 hours at this point, and see if any of them pop off. So, spoiler, those 24 hours are up. <laughs> and I have the results. The videos have all done well on Instagram, each of them gaining 15 to 20,000 views. With our sand physics doing the best, which I think might be my favorite as well. On TikTok, the sand physics is doing the best as well, followed by the water and then the cloth simulation physics. And on YouTube shorts, they all have the identical amount of 1.2 thousand views. That's kind of weird. I feel like YouTube just feeds it to a certain number of audience and maybe leaves it at that for a while before it decides to to push it to more people or not. So I guess those are kind of a wait and see if it goes anywhere. Facebook seems to slowly be gaining views on each of these as well. And so you never know, I guess, if one of these might pop off, just like the satisfying cube drop here did with about 10 million views. So I guess we'll see, but technically I guess I failed. That's not really the important part. I got to create some fun animations and maybe I inspired you guys to start experimenting as well, creating, having fun and copying. Wait. What? So people always use copying in sort of a negative light, but 
that's not really helpful in my opinion. If you don't have inspirations and you want to create, some of the best ways is to go out there and copy what others have done. And in the process, you'll get inspired to make some changes, make it your own, and learn a whole lot along the way. So I don't think there's any shame in that. All art is inspired by someone else in some way. So keep on blending. If you guys want to copy anything that I did in this video, be my guest. I'll help you out if you have any questions in the comment section below. You can download some of these animations on Patreon. And I'll see you all in the next video. Oh!